Women's issues today, we have the Minister responsible for women in the Presidency, uh, Minister Susan Shabangun. We're chatting about uh, the challenges that uh, women continue to face uh, in uh, 2014 and uh, perhaps some of the strategies and some of the initiatives to try and address some of those challenges going forward. And we've started to get questions already from our floor uh, and also coming through on Twitter. Uh, Minister Rehomidiswe uh, Mbutle says, um, yes, there are many mentors, but most don't have the time to help up-and-coming women, girls. How can this change? So women also have to take a responsibility, yep. don't they? Well, I must say that uh, I hope as we are gathered here, not just women, everybody will contribute towards the development of a girl child. And I agree with the person of mm. saying that to say, if we have to be a successful nation, We've got to nurture our young people. That is why our responsibility, we're also serving in the human, what is this, HRD mm. Council led by the Deputy President. I think our role there is to observe how education, especially at tertiary levels, how many young girls go through, how many, even in between, how many are able to go towards the end or completing their mm. education? That's what we've got mm. to look at for us then to see whether are women properly positioned in various sectors mm. in life. That's what we've got to do. So the issue of mentoring, as South Africa, we have started, it's not enough. We know that there are various professionals, women who mentor young girls. But I think it needs to form part of our culture. It must not just be about the girl in your own home, it must be about the girl next door, it's about the girl in the next street. Mm. And each company, if they could agree that they play a role right from secondary in identifying young girls and grooming them, that's how we can make a difference for us as a country. Okay. All right, let's go to table number two, where we'll find Barbara Hill. Table number two, Barbara Hill. Good morning. Um, Minister, I'm Barbara from an organization that deals with girls and boys from the street. It is a, a serious matter. Instead of us winning this battle, it seems we are sinking. There's a lot of girls and there's a lot of boys that are selling their bodies in the street. As time for change, we are trying to help these people. We were fortunate to get sponsors that helped us, PPC being the leader on those sponsors. We were helped by getting the bakery where we are training them to do their baking and sell so that uh, uh, they rather sell their product and those that are young, because we've got girls in the street who are 13 and 14, 15. But we are fortunate because we've got a school that we are dealing with, New Nation, where they take all these girls back to school. And they get the education. Those that are, are doing good were fortunate to get PPC also sponsoring their education. And I'm proud to tell you that we've got kids now who were called commercial sex workers, <coughs> but they're at the university and being sponsored by the, this uh, PPC cement. But now, when they are finished getting all these trainings and the skills that we are, we are giving to them, we have a challenge because while they're in the street, they have these uh, small fights that they're having. They fight uh, these cat uh, uh, um, battles that they are having in the street. Those things make them not to be employable because they, they take one another to court because so-and-so was fighting me, because so-and-so took my client, so-and-so took my this and that. And it becomes a serious challenge because we are trying to get them jobs, but now we cannot get them jobs because of that. Is there a, and, and the worst part that is making this to, to escalate is the fact that they were also on drugs when doing these things. And we do not have enough places to put these kids who are, uh, who are using drugs. We don't have enough rehabs. Right. A person must go to Hotel House, I don't know how many times before being sent for a, to a rehab. And after that, they don't get any help after that. All right, okay. So just, just before Minister answers your question, 
Um, and perhaps it will help us explore another issue. Uh, what are the primary reasons that have, we're finding our young people on the streets like that and selling their bodies? It differs. In fact, uh, with other girls, it is because at home, this child was molested as a child when growing up. So he or she does not know any other thing that he can do because there's no other jobs. Okay. And the others, yes, we, amongst them, there are those that are naughty. They're in the street because they want to be in the street. Mm. But amongst them, there are those that have got serious issues. If you, you sit down, and in fact, being in the street, Papa, these girls come to our project being really molested, okay. being abused, right. and the things that are happening to them. We, we are uh, customers of Johannesburg hospitals because they get hurt. Okay, all right. Thanks. Thank you. So a number of issues raised. Um, her concern is they're helping a number of children, um, but employment is a big issue. We've got to get them jobs, get them off their streets. And then at the back of that, and we can discuss that as well, is mm -hmm. Violence against women. <coughs> Children are being molested. What are we doing about that? Can I get the DG to respond? Right, okay. My Director General Paduza there to deal with the uh, issue. DG, if you could just identify yourself and then uh, is. respond. All right, so let's start with the, with the big issue of employment for women. How do we make sure that more women get employed, especially our young, because youth unemployment is really at the nerve center of some of the challenges that we're seeing? Yes, um, it's, thank you, um, Peter. And it's true, yeah, you do get those serious challenges mm. of when women accessing, because that's what you were saying, mm. when they access job, because you have to be screened, then they find that there's judgment against them, you know, and therefore they find it difficult to access employment. I think that's what uh, the lady was saying. I think we, 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 we need to, to uh, accept the fact that um, we, 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 we need to engage with companies and, and sensitize them to the fact that those young women really do need a step in the right direction. Because as she has indicated, it's not their own fault that they have found themselves on the other side of the law. So we really need to lobby with the, the employers to say that they, they need to, 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 to have concessions, especially for, for, for women especially those young girls that come from the street. Oh. The issue of um, yeah. gender-based violence, mm. uh, which you, you, say, you say must also touch to, mm. is, is also something that Minister has spoken about earlier on, that uh, as government we do have our, um, our justice cluster that is working towards ensuring that uh, we, 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 we do work on having support for, for women and girls that have gone through um, those um, unfortunate experiences mm -hmm. of, of gender-based violence. Uh, for instance, under the auspices of the Department of Justice, we do have our Tutuzela mm -hmm. care centers that are there to, to assist. They are in every uh, hospital. <coughs> uh, they are found in hospitals. We also um, do have uh, as, as, as government and interdepartmental management team that was set up uh, to look into uh, how best we can address the issue of gender-based violence. So yes, our uh, justice cluster is helping us a lot in terms mm. of that, but also you will know that the Department of uh, Social Development has got those victim empowerment centers that are there to ensure that a woman that has gone through that um, uh, experience is mm. able to to regain their, their, their consciousness they, they are with, they are self-with, and also sometimes they even go through uh, developing skills that will enable them, because sometimes they go through those experiences of GPV because they've got uh, nowhere else to go. So as, as Minister has said, the economic mm -hmm. empowerment of, of women becomes critical. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Just, just uh, maybe DJ. to add on that, Peter, I think the point raised is very critical mm -hmm. on the young girls or young people who then end up having criminal records. I would suggest that it's one area which you might want to look at and lobby a justice mm -hmm. department where then, <clears throat> because there's also a process which you can appeal, but I think in this case, it needs a collective effort for us to raise it and take it up so that as they go through the system and they, when they've been rehabilitated, 
because the issue of them getting employment is about being reintegrated into society. So I think we have a role. I, I would say we must take it up as this ministry in making sure that uh, those young people don't have this perpetual record which pulls them back or takes them back to where they come from and hence they become uh, people who don't have a future. So I would say we'll have to work together on that. All right, I want us to explore this a little bit more because it, it is an issue that just doesn't go away. I mean, according to uh, Blow the Whistle, uh, an NGO, uh, 74,400 women are going to be raped this month in the month of August. And I'm just wondering, why is it, and most of those are, are people that know their victims, why is it that, and sadly, predominantly men, why is it that we have this culture and why is it that men think that they can do this and get away with it? Because that's kind of, we can help those that are victims and have all of these, but I almost think we need to start with the perpetrator and stop them doing that. Yep. What is it about that culture that, that it's become so prevalent in our society and what, what can we do about it, do you think, Minister? You know, the challenge we have, issue of violence against women, it's informed by many factors. One, it's where we come from culturally, given that men were seen to be more superior than women. That's the first problem. But the other issue which we all know, it's that uh, our system itself never addressed issues of violence against women. It was never taken serious until now of late. So you have a society which over time has deepened and made sure that women are minors or less human beings. That's where we come from. That's why our struggle in fighting violence against women and children cannot just be women. We need men. Mm -hmm. You know, you have organizations of men, like, am I right, Sonke? Mm -hmm. it's a Sonke. Mm -hmm. Such organizations are critical to come forward. You know, to show that our struggle, it's not about women only. The Gender Commission, it's led by a man. We need every person in society in addressing that and, and working on the attitudes which have been built over time. That is why our approach on gender equality, you can't just educate the girl child. You've got to take along the boy child mm -hmm. so as to create a balanced society. Because if we do that, then we're moving towards the eradication of violence. Mm -hmm. And the threat, sometimes some men feel inferior and hence they become bully, and they want to, they, they, their fulfillment is about beating up women or doing terrible things on women for them to feel that they are mature. These are some of the issues which we have to deal with. It's a societal problem, hence it needs the society as a whole. One of the key issues which has been raised by the United Nations women, it's about he for she. It's a campaign which we want to buy into that, for us to bring men on board if we have to deal with the issue of violence against women. We can't leave men behind as the, as the perpetrators because they're the ones. I mean, yesterday I was listening to the story of a woman who goes in to collect maintenance. Then she gets raped, you know? She, she becomes victims of almost everything. So we need these men, the education, Attitudes of men cannot be left behind. Mm. It's one critical campaign mm. we must have as a country. Hence, organizations like Sisonke are very, very critical in mobilizing men. Is, is there anyone from Sisonke here? Or... Sonke. 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 Yes, I was right. Is it's there Sonke. someone here? Or, in fact, what I'd like, is there anyone from an organization that looks at this? There's a, a, if you could put a microphone there. Maybe you can help me understand. Um, we have a history, but other countries have had the same challenges as well, where um, rapes were happening and they managed the problem somehow. Are there things that we can learn um, from other countries that we can do in our country to make it such an abomination that when we know that our friend is a rapist, that we do something about it and not just keep quiet? Yeah, my name is Fraser Tabet from uh, 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 Houteng Men's Forum. I think prevention is better than cure. 
we need to make sure that we, we identify other organizations that deals with uh, women and child, and child abuse, just to make sure that at least we give those organizations sup support that they deserve in terms of making sure that there's prevention in, in, uh, as far as child and women abuse is concerned. At the moment, we do run an organization called Houting Men's Forum that has got men's federation all over in our townships and towns and so on and so forth. I think we need to focus on making sure that such organization are self-sustainable so as to make sure that at the end of the day, the scourge of child abuse and women abuse is dealt with completely. What is it, what is, I'm trying to get to where men are talking and mm. they know that one of the guys among them does this. How, how do we get the men around him to call him out and say, guy, you can't do this? Well, the, the best way is to actually form uh, forums everywhere whereby men become members free of charge. All they do is to make sure that they get certificate in terms of saying they, will never, they won't participate in any form of abuse. They may not also abuse themselves because in some instances you find men that are abusing themselves by not taking care of themselves, by, not, by believing that a man is a man, the man cannot cry and stuff mm. like that. These are things that should be moved away from uh, because they, as the minister have mentioned, this has a lot to do with where we're coming mm. from. And we okay. need to deal with this thing proactively to make sure that there is mm. prevention before mm. any mm. kind of abuse is mm. take, takes place. And, and I would imagine minister as well, even women have a role to play because yeah. they know the woman next door mm. is being abused by her husband and we don't want to get involved. I agree, I agree, wholly repeated. You're so right, you know that your neighbor is getting attacked, you do nothing. Mm. And we've got to take up these issues, but also this, including women who are victims. They tend to defend the perpetrators. Mm. So we've got to deal with, it's a, it's a complex situation. Mm. We've got to find multiple solutions to the problem because, I mean, as you know, one of the difficulties which the police face, it's women who get abused by their partners open cases, then go back mm. and cancel the cases. If the cases are being uh, pers pursued by the police, what they mm. do, they don't turn up to t to, 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 as weaknesses. Mm. So there are many, many factors. And I must also say, sometimes it's not women who are saying are disadvantaged. It's women who, are, mm. who don't need a man for them to be there. But there's continued abuse. So it's multiple issues which affect us as a society. So for me, what is key, I agree, we need men's forums. But the challenge is that if we have men's forums in different places, who knows them? Mm. So the issues mm. for them to come forward, if they're in a particular township, they must profile mm. themselves so that they must be known and to attract more, but also continue to do the work in making sure that the... the, the advocacy. Mm. It's not just about them meeting together. What forms of campaigns do they take up about one awareness mm. in making sure that if they're in this particular township, people can know. Mm. But they can also offer to women in that area to mm. say, we are there as these men to protect you. We are there to make sure that your dignity, you get your dignity back as a woman. And I think if those kind of, of, of profiles and advocacy can happen in various areas, mm. we would be better because it's not going to help us to create uh, forums. No one knows about the forum, especially mm. where we are. So advocacy becomes very, very important. Mm. It's like when we are organizing in the past against apartheid in our own communities. You build structures which everybody can know. You know, the people who use for fighting against crime, whistles, and all that. You knew that there are these communities or there are these individuals mm. who are active. So I think they must be real activists in their little spaces, and people must know about what they are doing. All right. I know there's somebody in table number 17 who'd like to contribute. Uh, table 17, if you could just identify yourself. And I'm also curious to know that the men who are doing these things, do they genuinely believe that the, what they're doing is not wrong or are they doing it knowing it's wrong and they do it anyway? Your thoughts? Good morning. I'm Yinsa Makobela. 
I'm from a cooperative called Revolution Training. Um, what we focus on is moral regeneration amongst youth, um, assisting with drug problems um, and uh, issues of motivation. And um, I think a good start for the solution in helping men understand their roles and um, their value in a woman's life would be changing how the media portrays women. Um, I think it's very essential that if we look at today's society, we have the beauty and beast complex, where um, women are portrayed as these beauty uh, trophies and men are portrayed as these beasts that have um, the right to run riot upon their women. And if we somehow can change and understand the psychology within South African society, um, to say that this media is being portrayed along, all over the world, but why does it have this negative effect on South African society to the point that men believe they have the right to ostracize and practice these ill habits upon women? Mm -hmm. I think that would be a good start for us to be able to deal with the whole psychological effect that men have and how they view women, which I think is very important because our mothers and grandmothers didn't grow up with TV like our sisters are doing today. And our mothers are very strong and wouldn't tolerate the way we as young men speak to our sisters today and treat our women today. And I think we really need to start there by saying, you know what, we will not have that on our TV screens because I have a little sister, two little sisters who watch Generations and watch TV all day and are getting fed these subconscious messages that teach them to be submissive to men. When I have a single mom, when I have a single mom, when I have a single mom who was who for since 94, 95 has been single and taking care of all the men in her life. And I hope my sisters grow up to be a quarter of the women who built this country. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Um, I think what he said is the way we portray women mm. uh, in the media certainly is going to help. In fact, Andele, on table number two, you have an important question, I think, that kind of uh, helps speak to this. So let's hear your thoughts, and then we'll get a reaction from Minister. Um, Do you want to stand up so we can see you? Thanks. Um, thank you, Minister. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you um, for addressing the issue of mentors uh, because I'm here today because of my mentor who's sitting at table number one. Thank you. Um, so I really think as women, we need to put forefront uh, the women that are doing the work behind doors, uh, who are doing the mentorship and pushing other young women to the forefront. Um, so thank you to you, Minister, and thank you to my mentor, Dr. Msiga Zinduna from the University of Wichita's Rand. Um, my question was engaging young people, um, as she has already started um, mentoring young people from um, picking the students in class and mentoring them and putting them into positions. Um, how does you as the ministry plan going forward and not only empowering, because most of the times we tend to focus on empowering and giving people rights, but then we forget the responsibility. So we yep. as women and young women, we need to be given the responsibility. So we need to be empowered, given the rights, but know our responsibilities as well. Do the work. So how does you ministry um, going forward mm. plan on engaging? So, so you want a chance to lead as well. Yes. Not just the right to, yep. but the chance to. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. I think it's an important question because um, we have a challenge in South Africa, let me put it that way, where people or we're developing a culture of entitlement and where people think that somebody else must do it for me. When we talk about uh, mentoring, mentoring can't be about an entitlement. It's also about learning from that person and doing better than your mentor. That's very, very important. I always say life is an interesting space because what you might not achieve yourself, you can achieve that through mentoring somebody. What you visualize will be reflected through the person you have mentored. So if all of us take responsibility in mentoring, 
we tend to, to some extent, express what we could not do ourselves through the other person. So it becomes very important because you might not be a leader, but you can produce a leader through mentoring. So I think those are the issues which we need to look at. Our mothers might not have been educated, but they produced most of us. It shows, it's, a, it, it's an internalized and translated into an action by producing a person in a particular way. So I, I agree with you to say, we've got to take responsibility of mentoring. If we have to be a successful country, it's about mentoring. Because then the, the, the good values which are there in a person gets translated and be done better mm -hmm. by the person you're mentoring. So for us, mm -hmm. as I say, which we have started in South Africa in a small way, we need to grow those programs of mentoring young people in making sure that they're, you don't have to mentor somebody because you're going to produce an engineer mm -hmm. or a politician. You mentor to produce a person who could contribute to society in different areas. So it's very, very important for us to do that. And coming to the point raised on men, it's a very, very critical point which is raising. Media plays a very, very important role. I must say, I'm not going to mention which shows I don't watch. <laughs> there are shows which I don't watch, yeah. which I agree with him, which portrays, portrays women as objects. And they need to stop projecting women as objects, but also creating these power relations which continue to show that a man is stronger than a woman. So uh, media has right. a very, very critical role to play. But unfortunately, because it always claims to be independent <laughs> and all this, and they've right. got the right to everything, that must stop. They must play a constructive role. All right, so we, we also have another huge challenge, and it's continent-wide. And I don't know how you're going to overcome this, but culture also is one of those things that are, are contributing to this equation. A man can marry six wives and a woman can't. And that already creates an inequality in terms of the system of how we view women, uh, who belongs to who, and what role uh, people play. And you know, you still hear about ukutwala and all sorts of things like that. So I don't know how do we deal with the cultural challenges that we have um, in this society that you're trying to create where women are, are equal? Well, I must say that uh, indeed I agree with you. Culture, it's still a big, big obstacle. Um, but also, I think it's about empowerment of women. We must not stop talking about that. Because if you're going to be the fifth wife, you make a choice today. It's no longer compulsory. You know, there's no law, unlike in the past, customary law which forces you into that. It's about choice. Mm. And it also goes with empowerment. I mean, if you've gone to school, you've got a job, you've got everything, you can take care of yourself, why enter into being a lesser person mm. or the seventh wife? Mm. It's a choice. You better, you can work, you can take care of yourself, you've got everything. So. Choices, too, when it comes to customs, are being made. When it comes to Ugutwala, mm. it is a challenge. Because I can't be twilight me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a grown-up. Yeah. But to show that culture is wrong, we women play a role in allowing our young girls to be twilight, mm. you know? So we as mothers must stand firm. Whether Lobolo or no Lobolo, or Tunkomos or no Tunkomos, we must stand firm in making sure that a priority for our girl children is education. Mm -hmm. That's how we must empower them, not by marrying them mm -hmm. to old people. So, because in South Africa, we're lucky. Ukutwala, mm -hmm. it's an offense. Mm -hmm. It's an offense. Mm -hmm. So we must use that space. But I think it's also about us here going to those areas, the rural communities, playing a role in edu educating at schools, talking to mothers there, in making sure to say, priority is education. Mm. Opportunities for our young girls today, it's much more bigger. We've just launched Operation Pagisa, which looks at ocean economy. We need those young girls to participate in those economy. And the only way for them to participate, it's when they go to school, because our oceans, don't run, they don't run in the cities, 
they run in those rural areas. So the young girls in those areas, we must go mm. out there, make them to go to mm. school, to be able to fend for themselves and be confident, mm. so as to avoid Okutwala. But it's us who must go out. Mm. One of our responsibilities this ministry, we're going to work with other departments, rural development, educating, building awareness mm. with our mothers in the rural areas. All right, okay. Uh, we're going to have to go back to our studio in uh, Auckland Park because uh, there's a breaking story that we need to uh, share very urgently. And uh, uh, Valen Kirtley is uh, standing by uh, to share that story with us. Valen, what's, what's developing? Thank you, Peter. Actually, it's a really good news story. It's a